the show was on for, it was for several years before I joined it, because uh, I, the show, I think, started in the 50s, I think. Mid-50s, I th maybe? I think so. Mm -hmm. Because I joined it then, what, 62, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And they'd been on about four or five years or more and so on. Because I joined it in 62 as a, as a stage manager. And uh, I used to harass them after I got to know them and got embedded in part of the show. I used to say, when are you going to put a, a black child on the show, a black character? I say, we, this is America. I say, we are trying to teach children to be American, which is a melting pot, everybody. I say, then you're not showing the children who, who are coming up. You're not showing them any, any blacks at all. And I'd stay, I used to stay on their case. You know, I didn't make a big deal out of it. But I would mention it properly and at the right time. And, and so. <laughs> to whom did you mention that to? The producers. The producers. Uh, Sam Gibbon and that whole bunch, because incidentally, uh, Sesame Street was started by Kangaroo Crews, the the producers from Captain Kangaroo, were the original producers of, of uh, Sesame Street. But anyway, I used to mention it to them, and so uh, 1968, uh, I was getting ready. I was doing. I was stage managing Cronkite and getting ready to uh, go with Cronkite for the terrible convention, Democratic convention in Chicago. And one of the producers came to me and said, Jimmy, we finally gonna give in to what you've been on our case about. I said, what's that? He said, we're gonna add a black actor to the show. I said, hey, great, give me a shot at it. He said, you, you, I said, hey, I'm stage managing because I can't find enough performing to do. I said, I'm an actor. He says, well, we're going to audition the people this week. I said, you can't do that to me. I said, I'm, you know I'm scheduled to go with Walter Cronkite to the convention. You got to give me a shot at it. He says, well, tell you what we'll do then. We will audition the people we are going to audition, and then we will hold off settling on anyone until you come back and get a shot at the audition. I said, fair enough. And so sure enough, went with Walter, and, did, and when the convention was over, and I came back, the day I came back, I came right to my assignment for Kangaroo, and the producer said, Jimmy, remember what we said? Say, audition, when we finish this first show, go upstairs, because they're going to audition you. And sure enough, came in and went up, and they said, we're going to give you the same audition we gave everybody else. Fine. And I did the audition came back down to do the second show because we used to tape two shows a day. And it came down and the captain <laughs> said, you should pardon the expression, captain said, you son of a bitch. I said, now what's that all about? What I do now? He said, you haven't done anything except that you got the part. I said, what? He says, and I want you to know, Jimmy, it's not because we know you and like you and like your work and so on. You did the best audition. I said, well, thank you because I appreciate getting it that way. I would rather get it that way, off my talent, you know? And sure enough, and so then CBS, a uh, 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 couple of vice presidents again this time, told me, Jimmy, the kangaroo wants you over there. I said, yes, as an actor. He says, well now, you're a staff stage manager. Would you like to pack in the staff and we'll still wreck your free, freelance uh, and do that? I says, no, I would like to do both. He said, you can do both at the same time. I said, I can. He said, can you work? I said, if you let me work it out, I can work it out and we'll do, and I'll do both. And I did work it out and I did it for 12 years, running part. And for those 12 years, I worked seven days a week because I was still doing Cronkite and so on. 